What's up everybody? It is Monday, September 13th. First day of school for New York City public school kids. One million kids going back to school, man. That's the biggest school district in the country and maybe one of the biggest in the world. I don't know. Anyway, it's Monday. I put out the new edition of MMT Trader. If you want to get a copy of that, don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial and uh, check it out. Remember, I'm the only one who has an applied approach to MMT. I take the concepts and understandings of MMT and I apply them to investing in the financial markets. All right, so we had a nice bounce back in the Dow today. S&P was up. NASDAQ basically flat. I said last week that I thought we could have a, a, a pop-up, a rally this week based on uh, corporation income taxes are due on Wednesday the 15th and that will be a very needed reserve drain you know I've been talking about the building reserves we had 11 weeks up 750 billion increase in reserves and like amazingly the banks have been able to handle that like I went over the bank data on Friday it's all in the report uh, you know the really in-depth breakdown of it but the bank data shows again you know growth in loans and leases growth in bank assets growth in bank residual that's bank capital growth in uh, uh, profits on um, securities positions so the banks amazingly have been holding in there really well like I look at bank stocks right now and how they're kind of static and especially the big banks you know JP Morgan City uh, Bank of America uh, they're kind of they're kind of flat ish their stock prices but I mean man underlying that I mean if you look at the fundamentals and if you look at the recent trends in the bank data I mean it's all really really positive uh, and I suspect that the thing holding it back is really this reserve situation that is just keeping the growth rate of loans, you know, at a very slow pace. I mean, it's, it's also incredible that we're seeing loans increase, but it's at a very slow pace. And I think that, you know, if we get the debt ceiling increase and we start to see some renewed sales of treasuries and again that's a reserve drain that's not borrowing okay you don't need to borrow what you can create without limit which is dollars the federal government you need dollars to buy treasuries so the dollars have to be put there in the first place they have to be spent in the into the economy before anyone has a dollar to buy a treasury and no the fed does not give money to the treasury the fed buys securities from dealers who have already purchased those securities at auction so like when your friends or your colleagues are telling you oh yeah we you know we got to borrow we got to sell bonds that that's not borrowing that is a reserve drain and you see what's happening now without the ability to drain reserves you know it really slows down uh, lending banks are constrained by regulatory uh, constraints you know I've spoken about the leverage ratio I've given you the formula for the leverage ratio and how reserves uh, as they pile up they inhibit the ability of banks to lend anyway uh, I thought we might get a rally this week because we're gonna get those tax payments that sucks if you gotta pay it which I do uh, <laughs> if you get those tax pay I pay corporation I, t I pay personal so um, yeah, so that'll be a reserve drain. But then, again, the Treasury is under the debt ceiling, so that money's just going to be spent right back out again. But it, I think this week, through Wednesday at least, through Thursday, maybe through the entire week, we could see a bounce back. But I, I'm, I don't think that is going to change the situation now which I think is still we're in a corrective mode until we can get the debt ceiling lifted actually fiscal flows are pretty good like I'm not seeing any significant deceleration in the fiscal flows I'm really not seeing any deceleration at all um, same thing curiously with unemployment benefits I think I talked about this last week that unemployment benefits 
uh, if you look at the five-day average of benefits being paid out, I mean, that hit $1.4 billion last week. That was the highest level in a month. So it's weird because we had the end of those supplement, supplemental unemployment benefits, the ones related to COVID. That ended right after Labor Day. So, uh, you know, we got a week's worth of data. And... Um, even with those payments having ended, there has been a trend upwards in unemployment benefits. And what's, what's doubly weird about this is that last week we saw weekly unemployment claims actually go down to the lowest level in 18 months. So uh, it's kind of screwy what's going on. But, you know, sometimes things are not apparent in a few days or a week. you got to give it some time to play out. So fiscal flows are okay. Uh, but I think we have reached the threshold now or, or the uh, scenario now where these reserve balances, like I was talking about this in my last video, I think, or, or the one on Friday, where this was a very tradable pattern that we had for, you know, a year if not longer. I mean I caught on to it back in 2019 whereas before I wasn't really aware uh, of these um, you know these reserve flows sloshing back and forth and how they impact you know what banks do and then I caught on to it and and started to watch it and it's a very tradable pattern. I mean it you know it's one of these things where it's kinda like inside information but it's not inside it's not illegal I mean you know you could track these uh, these reserve flows and they do have an impact on what banks do you know they shuffle around assets they could sell trading assets they could buy trading assets and this this moves the market around very short term I mean if you're looking for something like some short-term trading insight or I don't want to call it a system necessarily, but just, you know, some, some insight, some knowledge, some understanding of how these flows push things around with banks adjusting. I mean, this is it. And I think we're back to this uh, pattern now. It, it wasn't there all last year because they suspended the treatment of reserves in the calculation of that leverage ratio. So it didn't have any impact then it went back in force at the end of March of this year remember everybody was talking about that oh it's going to be terrible it's going to be horrible what are the banks going to do I said hey you know pump the brakes on that it should be fine for a while then the Fed set up uh, its reverse repo facility so it has been you know sweeping cash out of uh, you know the banks have been like uh, handing over deposits to the Fed um, just to, to clear up some space on their books but now it looks like the Fed has fallen behind a little bit not keeping pace and so we're back in this effect where reserve flows I think are having a short-term impact on market movements there's another thing that might be happening here too I mean obviously the Fed sees this and there must be a reason why it's not raising the limit on its uh, reserve repo facility. Like, remember they started out at 500 billion, then they went to a trillion, now it's like 1.4 trillion. I mean, they're not boosting it up. Maybe they're all saying, you know what? We can't keep doing this temporary fix. I mean, we're pumping in 120 billion a month with our asset purchases you know we're gonna have to stop we're gonna have to taper and taper that's the thing everybody's freaking out about right oh my god taper taper but I've been all over this and, and my subscribers know because I did a whole detailed analysis of going back historically and looking at taper or for that matter even looking at QE it has zero long-term impact zero long-term impact fiscal flows are everything this taper adjustment is just again it's a reshuffling a re composition of the assets of, of the financial assets in the system everybody freaks out I'll tell you this if you if you had gone against the 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 taper freak out or the QE freak out you know you would have made money no doubt about it 
Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. See you tomorrow. Bye.